so you want to beat your home game. Here are seven tips to help you crush your friends. Honey. When I'm at a party and someone learns that I'm a professional poker player, the first thing they ask me is what can I do to beat my friends? Well, this is for you. This is seven tips to crush your friends at your home game. Number one, hand selection. Which hands you choose to play and which hands you choose to muck is so important. When you put in a really difficult decision on later streets, it often comes back to that pre-flop decision of whether or not you should have played that hand. Choose a hand that has a very good chance of being the best hand or a reasonably good chance of drawing to that hand. The general population that make up these home games are loose players, which means they play far too many hands. You can capitalize that by playing fewer hands and being selective on the ones you do play. Some players play those hands and then they hit and they have huge nights, but that's rare. Number two, you can't win if you fold. Or can you? Do, do, do. Folding sucks. Folding means you're surrendering your chance at the pot. You cannot win the pot if you fold. But calling, on the other hand, costs you more money. Players like to call. The reason they like to call is because it satisfies that inner curiosity of what did they have. If you fold, you may never know what your opponent had but calling just to satisfy the curiosity. Remember, curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> calling too often is the second fastest way to lose the most at poker. The first is bluffing incorrectly, but the second is calling too much. Which brings us to number three. You don't wanna bluff. You don't wanna bluff because they're likely to call. All in. I call. So you're there to have fun and play and you can't win if you fold. Well, that is the mindset of most of the recreational players you're playing against. They do not want to fold. So therefore, it's going to be really hard for you to win by bluffing. Most of your friends are going to play way too many weak hands and they're going to stick along way too long. Okay, he's drawing dead. Wait, what? Did he win that? If one of your friends does like to fold and is capable of folding, that's the person you're allowed to bluff in good spots. Number four, go for extreme value. If you can't bluff your opponents because they call too much, then we need to be betting for value even more whenever we believe we could possibly have the best hand, whenever there's the slightest chance we have the best hand. In a game like No Limit Hold'em, you can even extract more money by playing with the bet sizes, by how much you bet. Home game players are often uneducated on bet sizing, which means they can't tell when a bet is small, medium, normal, pot size, small. or a ridiculous over bet. Large. To them, it's just a bet. So the amount you bet is essentially irrelevant to them. We can exploit this by going for extreme value, by betting really large against the calling station when we have a really good hand, because he's gonna call any amount. On the other hand, we can also bet small on hands that aren't necessarily the best hand, but possibly are. If you have a good hand, go all in. If you have a pretty hand against the calling station, go all in. Pretty hands all in. Pretty hands all in. Pretty hands all in. Number five, get to know your opponents. Home game players are often the same group of people from week to week, which gives us a huge advantage. We get to know how they play and their playing style. We can take advantages of their habits, of their weaknesses, and the way they play. Most home game players are loose, passive players. They play far too many hands and they play them passively. They'll only bet or raise when they have the best hand. So if a loose passive player is bet or raising, run. <laughs> Unless you have a better hand. A loose passive player will stick around if they hit the board at all and have any possibility of making the best hand. 
they will only raise when they have a really strong hand. These players are an easy target when you have a strong hand. You can extract so much money from them. Number six, don't slow play. Don't slow play. Don't get fancy. Because players at home games don't fold, we need to capitalize that by making them pay when we have a hand. We need to build the pot, make the pot big when we have a hand. If you make a big hand, bet and raise it every opportunity to build the pot and to protect your equity. You're like, when do you slow play? I don't even slow play here because uh, I would continue this flop with so much of my range anyways. Like any pop, any of my, any of my pre-flop range, I'm pretty continuing. Okay, and so I'm trying to build a pot. Your, your opponents are probably going to be calling stations, so make them pay for their loose playing style. Number seven, subscribe to this channel. Click the subscribe button and watch my new content whenever it comes out. It will help you with your game. Twitch chat made me do it.